Week three of the college football season is upon us. Plenty of dogs on the car that we're going to be taking a look at here today. Maybe even a nice double-digit dog that you're going to want to consider. But we kick it off with a game on Thursday uh, night, in fact, uh, we're going to focus on as uh, we welcome you in here to bet on it, the college football edition on Wager Talk. Marco D'Angelo, Kelly Stewart, Arizona taking on Kansas State. And who better to break this game down than uh, than you, Kelly? It's a, It's been an interesting start for both these teams to the season. Uh, what did you think of the Tulane game and what are we getting in this one? God, the Tulane game was so frustrating. Uh, John Murray told me on Kelly and Murray's show, hey, Sharp Group took Tulane plus 10. And I said, great, 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 great. Just what I wanted to see. We saw this one dropped like nine and a half, maybe even nine. K-State looked absolutely atrocious right out of the freaking gate. Like I was watching the game with my dad and I finally was like, I'm going to go like grab tacos or something for lunch because anything is better than watching this football game. Uh, Avery Johnson... Dylan Edwards, DJ Giddens should be getting 70, 80 offensive plays a game. Mm. The last two games are getting like 50. So Coach Kleiman addressed it in his press conference and said, hey, our defense is in, on the field entirely too long. That is the number one problem with this team. Now, offensively, as I mentioned, two-headed monster in the backfield plus a mobile quarterback plus an offensive line that has yet to give up a sack. We're going to see K-State's pass rush is the good part of that defense. Last week, Romaine, big-time sack, got the go-ahead fumble for the six. That was the turning point in that two-lane game. But that secondary is so god-awful that I don't know if I could lay seven and a half with Kansas State. Seven, I played it early in the week. I said, fine, we may come back on the other side. Let's see how this one moves. If K-State runs the ball, controls the time of possession. They will absolutely win this game by double digits. If that secondary gets burned by this offensive scheme that Arizona is going to run against them, I don't know what to make of it. I will tell you this. K-State 12-2 and against the spread as a home favorite over the last two seasons. We also know Coach Kleiman always lays an egg every single year in his inception. They lost to Tulane two years ago. His Opening season, Arkansas State. There's always something that happens. They escaped Tulane last week, and I think that Coach Klanderman, who is the defensive coordinator, will have this defense ready. They are great at making changes in game. We saw it in that second half, so we'll see. First-year head coach, Manhattan, Kansas. Arizona's coming in to a very tough environment Friday night. K-State covers the seven. Be wary at seven and a half. Well, we got a couple of top 25 teams going to be in action here for our primetime games. Marco, BC is a top 25 team. Well, they are, and they're taking on Mizzou. This one is on Saturday. What are we looking at here? Well, Joe, yeah, Boston College is, is, is a surprise uh, jumping into the top 25, and that's obviously because they beat Florida State. And we'll wait and see. Uh, the jury's still out on if they're a good team or not. But I'm looking at this Boston College team in this one, and this is going to be their third game in 13 days. Mm -hmm. um, that's a lot to start the season. Granted, uh, last week, you know, they came off playing on Labor Day, had the quick turnaround uh, short uh, week, but it was basically a glorified scrimmage. They played uh, Duquesne, small school out of Pittsburgh, and just absolutely annihilated them. So the fact that they beat a nobody and they beat a maybe somebody, but we don't know after that first game with Florida State and what they've uh, done. I'm looking at this one. Missouri is the real deal, in my opinion. Uh, I love this team. They've absolutely drubbed both opponents, and people are going to say, yeah, playing Murray State and playing Buffalo, they're supposed to win. Yeah, they are. But you know what? Did you look at the top 25 teams last week that were supposed to win? Uh, there were a lot of scares in the top 25 last week. I think that'll serve uh, Missouri well not to take this team for granted. And the two teams that they beat, they beat them by a combined – 89 to nothing score but that was basically what the line was they were 50 point favorite in one 30 point favorite in the other 
I'm looking at this Missouri offense, and granted, they're going to be going against the tougher defense in Boston College, but I don't see Boston College stopping this balanced attack. You know I always talk about it in college football. It's only two games under their belt, but Missouri is in that 200 club. They run for over 200 yards. They pass for over 200 yards. That makes it tough on opposing defenses when they got a game plan. Which are you going to take away? Because they do both well. The other thing I like with a team that is balanced like this and can run the football so well, when we get to the second half and they have that lead, which they will, and you're wanting to kill clock and, you know, in – you can still be scoring because you're doing what you do well. Um, I just don't see Boston College when they fall behind by two scores and have to press the issue. That's when turnovers are going to happen. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to take Missouri. I'm going to lay the points. I think we're getting uh, a good number here. I think it's a three-touchdown type game. Give me Missouri minus the 17. I've got them winning 42-13. to 13. All right, here we go. Time for a little TNA with the one and only, the pen, Mr. Ralph Michaels. Ralph, we're starting to get a few more charts, and of course, uh, we're starting to get a lot more data, which means the TNA is going to be real interesting this week. What do you got for us? You know what, Joe? There's been a lot of good comments that I'm now putting the charts on for all these and the teams it applies to. And while I can say it's for all the viewers that watch every week and comment, hey, I'd love to see the charts. It was really Kelly screaming at me every week last week. I can't write that fast. Please put the teams it applies to on the charts so I know. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to put all three charts up for college football and go through three situations. First, what happens when a team loses to an FCS opponent? This is the green chart in the top left. Well, you might think, oh, hey, they bounce back. They're embarrassed. They lost to a little brother. Not true. When a team is off a loss versus an FCS team, they have only gone 40.5% against the spread. If they're off a loss as a favorite, the little P is previous, loss favorite, they've only covered 34.3%. If they are off a loss as a favorite and now at home, they are 3 and 12, 20% against the spread. And if you exclude games as a dog of 13 or more, so that line is less than 13, meaning they're a favorite or a dog up to 12 and a half, guess what? Those teams, like Wyoming this week, have gone 0 and 10 against the spread since 2015. So again, when you lose to an FCS team, that is a loss. That can cost you the next week as well. Kind of crazy, right? When you think about it, right? I mean, here we are, week three, and uh, we some of these are really starting to come into play big time with some of these games this week. You know, Joe, I, you know, I'm going to go back to my power sweep and, and North Coast days back in the '90s. It used to be a positive when you were embarrassed and lost to an FCS team. The problem is this. That was much more infrequent. These FCS teams are so much better now. Now these kids get drafted. You don't have to worry about going to an FCS school. You're still going to get exposure. Where before, if you had any chance of making the NFL, you usually had to come from an FBS squad and, and a Power 5, now a Power 4 squad. But the FCSs are very talented. System number two, Joe, this is specifically game three of a season. And what do teams do off back-to-back -back losses as a favorite? Listen, we've all bashed Florida State. Maybe we don't think that South Alabama was also off a loss as a favorite in back-to-back -back games because they were a small favorite. I think a one and a half and a five and a half or a six point. But again, they are off back-to-back -back losses as a favorite. Well, guess what? Those teams that were embarrassed have bounced back. Yeah, Florida State looks ugly, but... If you blindly bet teams in game three off losses as a back-to-back -back favorite, you've gone 17 and eight. Not a huge sample size, but it is 68%. And if you take now a line of less than 10, meaning they are now a favorite or a dog to nine and a half, you see they are 22 and seven, 76% against the spread. So, yes, it may be ugly to back Florida State and South Alabama this week, 
but they are both in that role that have covered 76% against the spread. All sorts of systems. We got a system for everything here, Ralph, don't we? We've got all sorts of charts, and we've got a lot of games that fit these systems here. What else do you got coming for us here? One more, Joe. Let's take a look at the one in the bottom in the purple. This one's simple, and it only applies to two games, but you have an away dog of 11 or more points, and they're off a loss of away. They're off a loss as an away favorite by 11 plus points. So you have Central Michigan and UAB who last week were favorites, but lost by 11 or more. And now they're an away dog of 11 or more. Those teams have gone 13 and 26 against the spread. That is 33%. So that says the purple system, system number three, to fade Central Michigan and fade UAB this weekend. A little something for everyone, as you can see on the chart there. Those systems all applying to some big games here in week three of the college football season. Ralph, always a pleasure here, my man. Keep that TNA going and don't forget the opportunity uh, to ride along with Ralph or Marco or VR or any one of your favorite handicappers at Wager Talk and get the NFL and college football combo 30 days for just one 99. You can get that done right now at your favorite handicappers page at wagertalk.com. Now we have to figure out if the deli is open here today. How about that big double digit dog of the week? And are we going to fade Joe Public this week? That is coming up next. Well, it was a very profitable deli last week as the sandwich from Marco came through with mm -hmm. Army. Marco, you got another sandwich for us here in week three of college football. What are we looking at? Well, it's another ugly sandwich, but you know what? Those fill you up just as well. And, you know, all I can do is make the sandwiches. If you don't eat them, that's that's up to you. But I'm looking at Illinois here. Uh, they're coming off big time uh, game last week. They're in a big time sandwich. And I was on Illinois. I know Kelly was on Illinois, too. And I'm going to be honest, they were kind of lucky to win that game last week. Uh, was it a case of Illinois beating Kansas or was it Kansas beating themselves? Well, uh, the turnover machine that Kansas had for last week, uh, they did themselves in. Now Illinois is coming off that big win against the top 25 team at the time, and they've got another game on deck. Uh, look what they've got on deck. They've got Nebraska in Nebraska, Big Ten matchup. This is just a spot where how do they get excited for Central Michigan, especially since Central Michigan got blown out last week 52-16. to 16. All that does is give us line value in this particular game, and we saw the line shoot up from the opener, got up as high as 20 last night, come back down to 18 and a half today. I still like it. I think this is going to be a much tighter game. You look at um, the game last week with Central Michigan. Yeah, they got blown out. But you want to know how many turnovers they've had? They had six in that game. You're minus six in a turnover department. You are going to lose, and you're going to lose big. This is a spot where – the Mac always gets up for playing these teams in the Big Ten. A lot of these kids wanted to go to a Big Ten school. They didn't pick up the scholarship. So when they get a chance to play the teams that you weren't good enough for us, it's a chip on their shoulder, and I'll take the hungry dog in this one. And then when you throw in what you're coming off of, Kansas, and then Nebraska on deck, and after Nebraska beat Colorado last week, that's a big game. And Nebraska has a chance – uh, as we said, to run the table up to that Ohio State game. So I know Illinois is going to be looking ahead, and you want to make it one step better that it's already a sandwich. They play on Friday night next week against Nebraska. So uh, it's a spot where teams do look ahead for those Thursday-Friday games because there's generally only one or two games and a spotlight is shine brightly on you. Give me Central Michigan – Plus the points. This one goes down to the wire. Uh, give me the ball. I'm not going to do the sprinkle, Kelly, but I tell you they're going to stay inside three scores. Ooh, boy, that is – I'm not going to lie, Marco. That is 
Wow, is that disgusting on so many levels there. But yes, uh, Central Michigan it is uh, for Marco and a sandwich spot. Now, Kelly, uh, let me just say again, you're welcome. Uh, I was kind enough to take your double-digit dog you wanted for the show last week in App State. And boy, did I pay the price for that. So I'm out there. So no double-digit dogs for me, but I know you have one that you're looking at. I do, and they're almost not a double-digit dog anymore here. Uh, down to plus 10. I took this one last night, 12 and a half with the Boilermakers. So somebody agrees with me. That worked out well for us last week with Cal. And hey, Marco's got his on the move as well. Woo, they were on my long list, Marco. So good luck to you. Now, this is really interesting because Purdue didn't play a game last week. Uh, and you have a deflated Notre Dame team 28 and a half point favorites. They lost 16 to 14 to Northern Illinois after beating AM the week prior. And one would have to say that probably really limits their chances of getting into the college football playoff. Now, the Irish's passing game has been absolutely terrible. Riley Leonard, when you put pressure on this kid, well, he folds like a chair. Got picked off twice, and uh, he's still yet to hit the end zone. Look, I know a lot of people want to back the Irish in a bounce back spot, but I don't think this is the spot to do so. This is a Purdue team you guys have seen on my card plenty of times over the last four years. And the reason why is because they win games outright. Nine ranked teams over the past three seasons, four outright winners. I'll take my chances here with the 10 with Purdue and hey, Maybe the Boilermakers can shock the world and the Irish can lose that Huskies game twice. Can't think of anybody uh, I trust less than Notre Dame in any spot. Uh, but good luck uh, with that, Notre Dame, because uh, this could be Purdue's uh, one time to shine here this year. And it's going to be one hell of a game, that's for sure. Uh, but now we got to take a look at the public and figure out whether or not We'll be actually fading them. And we're going to head to, of course, I think it's the 107th meeting for the backyard brawl between West Virginia and Pittsburgh. Uh, they'll be going at it here this weekend. And uh, yes, the public seems to love themselves. Uh, West Virginia, the Mountaineers, as they head to Pittsburgh to get it done. Uh, but I don't know why. I can't think of anything more scary. Uh, then looking at Neil Brown, West Virginia teams on the road. Uh, here's a newsflash. They never cover. They barely win on the road. They are a much different team at home in Morgantown than they are on the road. And let's face it, anybody who watched that pit game last week, uh, wow, what a unbelievable fourth quarter uh, and comeback down, what, 17 points in that game and, and came on the road all the way back against Cincy. In fact, they were down 27 to six late in the third quarter. And then they ended up getting that game winning field goal with just 17 seconds left to pull out the dramatic upset. And why did they do it? Uh, well, this quarterback Holstein, 638 yards so far in two games, uh, completing 67% of their passes. And let's not forget the running game. Uh, they've got this kid Reed here now that's got almost 300 yards in two games. They've got a really Nice combination. They gave up way too much on the ground to Cincinnati, which, of course, with Donaldson and White, along with Green for West Virginia, who's a dual threat quarterback. Uh, listen, they're going to be able to push the ball and run the ball. But if there's one thing Pittsburgh showed me last week is that with Narduzzi, and we should have learned this, uh, they are never going to go away. They are never, ever uh, going to quit here. And we saw them last year, I believe. Same situation there. West Virginia was leading 31-24 in the fourth quarter. And then Pitt, with a pick six, turns around, wins that game 38-31. That was on the road. This one is home. I like Pitt getting the points here. I know everyone thinks West Virginia is underrated. I don't. I hate Neil Brown on the road. I love Narduzzi at home. I'm going to take the three points. I'm going to fade Joe Public and West Virginia in this one. Gianni the Greek, VR, week three already. Can you believe it? Got to be a ton of gold coming this week, no? 
Yeah, absolutely. A lot of stuff, a lot of adjustments, and uh, a lot we learned, Joe, over the first two weeks in college football. I mean, yes, last week was the real first real week. Uh, and what I saw was a ton of totals that got manipulated, get bet the other way. Uh, so you got to be very cautious in drawing those conclusions, especially on over-unders earlier in the week. You got to remember, limits increase as the week progresses. Why? Because books have more confidence in their numbers. That's why we always talk about CLV, closing line value. Because if you're able to get ahead of the line move, you're a mathematical certainty to turn a profit because you've gotten ahead of the information. By Saturday, when college football, by Sunday, NFL, we know who's injured. We know what the weather is. We've heard all the comments. Most of the information is already factored in, is baked into the cake. So as the books have more confidence in what the, the true line should be, or they're able to balance the money, the bigger the limits are going to be. And so that's why you, a lot of these groups are betting a total, let's say over 46, low limits, getting it up to 49 for very little money, then coming back Saturday, betting under 49 for 10x, 15x, that original amount. And the good thing for them is that original amount wasn't even a bad bet because they have a decent ticket in their pocket when they're going under 49 and over 46. So they're in the most advantageous position. And if you can do that, why wouldn't you? So be very cautious. The totals that I'm going to share today are the ones that I know got hit multiple times and by multiple groups. When that happens, the probability of it being a setup lessen greatly because they don't all work together. This is a zero sum game. So let's start off with prime time action, Texas state plus three, that number is no longer there, but I did see some money line sprinkle as well. Then Friday prime time, Kansas state minus the seven at minus 110 and also the over 57 and a half, 58, 58 and a half. Now let's move on to Saturday action, North Texas plus 12, all the way down to plus 11, move down to Illinois minus 17 and a half, and minus 18. Next game, Memphis, Florida State. Seeing two-way action here. Here's what I mean. Memphis, Florida State gets bet at minus five, minus five and a half, minus six. Sitting at seven, whoever laid minus fives, and if they're a big group that got down big money, they're probably going to take some take back on seven. That's exactly what happened. These guys bet numbers. They don't bet teams. Got to move down to Arkansas State, plus 24. Missouri, minus 16, minus 16 and a half. Oregon, Laying double digits, they laid it at two touchdowns, minus 14. Go down to Tulane. They took the 14 points. They took the two touchdowns with Tulane, and they also bet the game under, which seems correlated for getting double digits. But they went under 51, 50 and a half, 50 and 49 and a half. Did the same exact thing with Appalachian State and East Carolina, except the opposite. Going over 56, 57, 57 and a half. And then three days later, two days later, over 59. So if 56 was off, they still thought 59 was value there. Remember what we talked about in the first week, that totals and sides that moved three plus points, the value was extracted. Well, here's one of those examples where they didn't think that was the case. Flip the page, Arkansas minus 21, a lot of favorites. Virginia Tech minus 13 and a half. Couple dogs here, Middle Tennessee State as home dogs, plus eight and a half, plus seven and a half. At seven, haven't seen any Western Kentucky get laid. That's what you got to pay attention for. They also went over 53 and a half and 54. Dropped down to Central Florida at plus one and a half at money line at that plus one and a half and then took the pick as well. So a couple shots on Central Florida on the road against TCU. Kentucky took the almost three touchdowns against Georgia as home dogs. Indiana, UCLA under 48 and a half, under 47 and a half. Rice plus four and a half and the over 42, over 43. And finally, New Mexico State against Fresno State, plus three touchdowns, then came back and took the plus 20 as well. Again, that's the information. Those are the, the plays that I've gotten down on for the groups that I move for or accounts that they've been into and some of the stuff that I got from other guys that do my exact job. So you could, if you like it, follow. Hopefully you get a good number. If you've disagree, then you're definitely going to get an even better number because we moved it for you. So whether you follow or fade, again, I just hope you make some money, do some damage on Saturday. Thanks for having me, Joe. Oh, VR, I'll tell you, another great way to make some money is to get, how about a 30-day all-access pass NFL and college football? 
for just $199. You can do that right now. Take advantage. Visit Gianni's page or any one of your favorite handicappers at wagertalk.com and get a 30-day NFL college football combo. Get the package for just $199. Never miss a play. And speaking of plays, we got best bets. Yes, best bet time here in week three of the college football season. We've had a couple of games under our belt here. And Marco, I'll start with you. When you put it all together this week, what's the one game you circled for a best bet? Well, Joe, I'm going to the state of Texas, and we're going to take a look at the Rice Owls. This is a play for me that is all about fading Houston. I love to go against a team who is coming off a big effort as a big dog and just come up short. There's always a hangover after a game like that. Houston is a 30-point underdog, went to Oklahoma and only lost 16-12. to uh, That and now they're going to return home off of that good-looking loss, and you're making them a favorite? No, I can't do that. They're going to have the letdown flat spot, however you want to cliche you want to use. Now let's look at Rice. Rice is in this game. This is what I like to refer to as the little brother, big brother game. Both teams are in the state of Texas, but obviously recent years, Houston has been the bigger name. Uh, in football, and they're in the bigger conference. you got the Big 12. So they are going to be the ones playing with a chip on their shoulder. And how can I lay points with a team, Houston? Now, granted, they're not going against the Oklahoma defense, but they did go against the UNLV de- defense in week one. They've had 50 yards on 25 carries against UNLV. They had 58 yards on 35 carries against Oklahoma. If you're going to be a one-dimensional team, you're not, I don't want to lay points with you. And Rice is a team that can run the football, can control clock, keep Houston on the field for long periods of time. I'm going to go ahead and take it. And Rice, ironically, as I said, they're the little brother. They're changing roles because their first two games were against other Texas schools but they were the big brother in those matchups as they played Sam Houston State and Texas Southern. They get the job done here. Yeah, they scored 69 points in their last game. Generally, I don't like taking a team that had such a big offensive showing that generally doesn't do that. But the fact that it's against a rival uh, in Houston and they've got something to prove, I've got to do it, and as far as Houston goes, you can even call this a little bit of a sandwich game because off of the Oklahoma game, they've got a conference rival in Cincinnati, and this is really one of their rivals because if you remember, they both joined the Big 12 at the same time when they left the American Athletic Conference to come here uh, together, Cincinnati and Houston. Give me rice. I'm going to stay with these ugly dogs this week. They're plus four. Uh, I've got them winning outright. Rice, 20 to 17 in another yawner of a game. God, that is, again, disgusting on so many levels, Marco, and I absolutely uh, love it. But I know <laughs> Kelly has got a uh, a much sexier best bet here in which I, like, a lot of people are going to be looking at this game, Cal, but I don't know if they're looking the way you're looking here. Talk to me about this SEC matchup. That's always a concern, right? We never want the dog with fleas like Michigan last week. And I I would agree with you. This is a lot sexier of a pick given what they just did. And I'm probably picking them for that exact reason because maybe I have a little regret for leaving the Gamecocks off my better defense plus the points video last week after they beat Kentucky and I used Michigan in their spot. But we're back to this week. If you guys remember week one, we took LSU in our parlay and that was a bet against, or excuse me, USC. And that was against LSU in, well, that week one neutral field. I said, hey, something doesn't give here. This LSU team lost their number two pick of a quarterback. And all of a sudden this offense is supposed to be good. They're not. In fact, they're so poor that they made the Trojans defense look good. This team has yet to put pressure on either quarterback they played. And I think that's really good for Lenora Sellers. We're going to see what Shane Beamer's made of. Typically like to back him as a home dog. Four and four 
They're at South Carolina, and four of those outright upsets by 19.2 points per game. I'm taking the touchdown here with the Gamecocks as my best bet for college football week three. Love it. South Carolina, get it done. Got it done against uh, Kentucky for us uh, last week, too, uh, which was a whole lot of fun to watch. Uh, Should be very interesting, some of these teams in the SEC this year, on what we're going to get. I, however, Marco, am going to beat you on disgusting on on a different kind of level here because the name of the game for me is all about value. And I can assure you, had Florida State won either of the first two games this season that they were supposed to win as ridiculous uh, monster favorites we would not be getting them laying under a touchdown at home, coming out of a bye, taking on Memphis here. Now, listen, it has been absolutely disgusting. Uh, I do think, first of all, I think Georgia Tech and I think BC were a little bit undervalued uh, by the market here. But Florida State has been its own worst enemy here, certainly offensively. They have failed to surpass 300 yards of total offense uh, in either of those two games. However, they're taking on a Memphis squad with Ryan Silverfield. Now, you may recall the head coach of Florida State is Mike Norvell. Do you know where Mike Norvell left in order to take the job at Florida State, in which he is 23-4 and now in his couple of seasons as the head coach of Florida State? That's right. He came from Memphis. And you know who he didn't bring? was Ryan Silverfield, who left behind and took the head coaching job. And Memphis is a staggering 0-10 straight up and 2-8 and against the number as a road underdog under Silverfield here. Listen, this is, to me, an outclass situation. The athletes, the football players on Florida State are heads and tails above anything that Memphis is going to bring to this game. Not to mention Florida State defensively had to take on two mobile quarterbacks in uh, in what they had there in the first two games with Georgia Tech and BC. Hennigan is not that. Uh, he is going to sit in the pocket, and he is also going to get hit here. I love the fact that they had a week off to work on it, and I love the fact that this, was, without a doubt, would have been a double-digit favorite spot for Florida State had it worked out in one of the first two games. They are not going to start the season 0-3 at home in Tallahassee. Give me Florida State to get it done in big-time fashion over Memphis this Saturday for win number one on the season. And that'll do it for this week of Bet On at the College Football Edition. I would uh, remind you just one last time, take advantage of that 30-day combo special, NFL College Football, just $199. Any one of your favorite handicappers at wagertalk.com, get every one of their NFL and college football picks for the next 30 days, just $199. So what are you waiting for? Go over, visit Marco. I told you about VR earlier, uh, Ralph Michaels. Uh, plenty of opportunities for you guys to make it a very profitable next 30 days in the NFL and college football. And on behalf of Kelly and Marco, we appreciate the time as always. Don't forget to smash that like button. Drop us a comment uh, below. Tell us what your favorite play of this weekend is. And make sure you come back and join us again for another week of Bet On It here on Wager Talk TV. Best of luck. We'll see you again next week.